Hello everyone, my name is Tia and I'm from MDC and uh, welcome to my home office in Svendborg and uh, I hope you are looking forward to sharing your lunch with us. I'll be the host of today's tidbit and I'm looking much forward to talk with Søren Bø who is uh, the CEO in his own company which is called Safe Mind Consult. You might know this guy from when you were sailing yourself or from sea health and welfare uh, where he did his uh, career before. I have myself been in touch with quite some drills and toolbox meetings and I've learned to think safety first when I was a cadet uh, but uh, now we're taking it to a new level and uh, CERN he will help us to open up the dialogue um, to talk about safety culture. You are most welcome to ask questions. Uh, I'll give them to CERN in the end. You can ask them in the chat and um, then we will take it in the end. Nothing more from me. I'll say cheers and I'll pass over the stage to CERN. Enjoy. A big, big thanks uh, for this opportunity. I'm very, very happy to be here. Uh, so great thanks to MDC for for this opportunity. Um, as Thea said, I have my uh, own little company uh, called Safe Mind Consults, um, and my uh, what what you can call it the, the areas of work is within the human side of safety. Uh, I have um, the five key questions to open up the dialogue on safety culture is some kind of a brought into this presentation for your reflection. So let's get started. What you see here is some kind of an extract of my discharge book as health and safety consultant on board Davis vessels. Um, so I would like with some context before I start the presentation why I think that dialogue is so important among people in the maritime is of vital importance. Uh, my background is Master Marine before I joined Sea Health. But then again, I was so lucky that I had the opportunity to go on sea voyages as health and safety consultant supporting the seafarers on board Danish vessels with any health and safety issue. Uh, after some ice breaking for a day or two, I experienced the most engaging, motivated people who had a lot of their minds. The knowledge I collected helping the seafarers is very much a part of my wisdom. And due to the fact that I was not a controller, I was not an auditor, I was not from the company, the crew shared a lot of thoughts with me. Uh, there was nothing at stake. At the voyages, as the voyages lasted many days, we also had the precondition for building up trust. We had many interesting dialogues how the safety culture inside the company could be improved. And missing dialogue was always a matter of improvement. Um, the seafarers experienced it was more like keeping the systems alive. So my first question is, when is the last time you had a pleasant conversation with one of your employees listening to their work field? If you like, you can leave a comment in the field. You can maybe write a day, maybe a month or a year. It's up to you. I have so many stories to tell you about my voyages. But I remember this one particularly well. It was on the bridge. It was late evening. No traffic in sight. Altogether, a nice and calm evening from Singapore to Hong Kong. The officer on watch was Indian. We were small talking about the weather and little things that we both could relate to. I said to him, that I've always been very curious about the Indian caste system. And if you would enlighten me what that was, and if it somehow had influence upon his life. 
Well, he was delighted to tell me all about it, continue for almost an hour, watching the traffic, of course. Very learning, very interesting conversation indeed. Then again, well, well, well suddenly the captain showed up, took a cup of coffee, stood next to us, just listening. The car story somehow continued into safety, with my little help, of course. The office on watch had so many thoughts and good ideas how to improve the safety overall, also inside the company. He was not afraid to speak up despite the captain stood next to us. The captain and I went to the mess room afterwards. His, fa his face looked like a big question mark. And silently he said, how did you do that? And I must say the short answer is human curiosity. In the, maritime, in the maritime sector, we have the ISM code, and we have many ships inspected by our stakeholders, such as vetting from all majors. Most companies perform in a world of compliance. I know that. Otherwise, they're out of business. I guess you know these methods to manage your safety, and probably many more. So with respect for risk assessment, safety meetings, KPIs, e-learning programs, it is my experience that these methods need to be supplemented with processes that contribute to giving effect to collaboration, ownership, motivation, and commitment among the workers doing the job. So my next question is, do you experience your safety is getting better doing what you're doing? And you can leave a comment if you like. These numbers are from the Dan Denmark Ashore various sectors. The accidents happened on vessels are not present here. Actually, they're very, very hard to get hands on. The statistics shows that from a period from 15 to 2080, there has been 42,000 plus, plus, plus accidents. You can see the numbers at the, at the bottom. I was quite concerned when I first, first saw these numbers. Why is it 42,000 and something? Is it because we do more of the same again and again, expecting different results? The curve on the right has been used in many contexts. We have reduced accidents significantly over the years. We have been focusing on technical, solu technical solutions and we have been establishing safety systems. However, Statistics show that the downward curve has flattened. So, despite legislation, safety management systems, and commitment from both managers and employees, it seems that a safety work has reached its peak and that companies no longer feel that it's possible to do much more to create a safer workplace with the tools they have. Showing it does not mean that. I think that we have finished improving our technical solutions or systems. The reason why I have brought this up here today is it's time to deal with the human factor now. We need to understand how normal people do normal work on normal Tuesdays much better. So the next question is, do you see you people as problem makers? A problem solvers. You can leave your comment if you like. I believe fundamentally, I would like to say that, that if everyone, everyone gets out of bed with a desire to act in good conscience, managers seek to be good leaders 
And likewise, employees want to fulfill expectations. Everyone is interested in having a good and safe working environment. I believe that. And they also want to contribute to finding the best solutions to any issue. I would like to use this metaphor as a, this brick wall as a metaphor. So look at the picture and tell me what safety is. Is it the bricks or is it the motor? You can leave your comments if you like. My answer is the motor. Safety is something we do together. It binds us together. Safety is more than what is sentenced to a piece of paper, a state of intent, or safety management system. If the motor is fragile, the wall is no longer is in danger to collapse. So then again, I can ask you, is the motor your systems or the motor the people? You can leave a comment if you like. My next question is, is there a big difference in the way your employees perform their work and the way in which your managers believe the work is being done? If you look at this one, you have the manager and you have the workers. Well, the managers, well, number one, maybe audits, ISM, or the other system, KPIs, regulations, procedures, risk assessments, safety meetings, everything connected to being compliant. The workers, well, number two, is a mix of human errors, best practices, small violations, successes, handling local risks, getting the job done on time to everybody's satisfaction. Well, two is difficult to explain. It's a mess of complexity. It seems to be perfect because everything works. It's seldom anything bad happens until a day. And who's to blame or what to blame? If the manager understood the complex role, things could be changed. How would he know if the workers didn't tell him? And then again, why should they tell him if they don't feel trusted, if they don't feel appreciated, are listened to and taken seriously? There has to be some kind of a dialogue on both what works well and the issues and the problems that the employees face in everyday work. Talking about these things paves way for improvement and managers should try to understand workers' intentions, their terms and their opportunities for action. I guess it's called leadership instead of management. Maybe you have tried to be a part of some kind of accident, accident investigation. The deeper you try to understand why it happened, the more you will find the reasons and the motives to people's behavior. You will discover the damaged and the fragile motor. You remember the wall, right? So begin a dialogue about the difficult stuff, the safety culture. Try to understand why people do what they do the way they do it. Discover in good time the damage motor in a proactive way. But then again, there's hope at the end of the tunnel. Together with Conigates, as you probably know, we together have created a safety dialogue game called Safe Talk. It can be difficult to start talking about behavior and culture and to identify which norms that characterize a specific workplace 
we have experienced how using a dialogue tool can help you create a framework and a structure that allows people to express and talk about what they think is important. It consists of 90 cards with everyday situation, which has a big influence upon the safety culture and people's behavior. The sum of the cards are directly from the sea. My experiences over the years, all the problem and all the successes is inside these cards. So the game sets a frame. It's a new context for a constructive dialogue between leaders, health and safety professionals and the workers. We have tested the game with one of the big, with some of the big industry players in Denmark, and uh, we I would like to share their uh, feedback with, with you. Vestas, really good team exercise that creates understanding of each other's worlds and our different worlds. You suddenly become happy with everything that works for us. It is that you feel a certain pat on the shoulder. It created a natural reflection when listening to your colleagues. A collaboration about your safety arose in a delightful, engaging way. We also been testing at Novo Nordisk. It was online due to the fact uh, that we have this uh, COVID-19 uh, among us. They said, you can suddenly see new opportunities lighter in the tongue. Lovely that our talk ended in a discussion on the things we mess with on a daily basis. Our dialogue created some kind of a calmness and trust in each other. So this game, by physically sitting around a board game, participants are urged to get involved and want to express themselves more. Positive Dynamics are experienced, people have great discussions, maybe even a laugh. No one is above the others because of the ego involvement that goes into making the game work. The participants' curiosity for their fellow players is heightened, will result in a sympathetic approach for other perspectives than their own. Dialogue and involvement are therefore also some of the buzzwords in today's workplaces. Employees of 2020 expect to be seen and listened to, both in appreciation for their personal and professional skills. <clears throat> so question number five for you, which competences are the most important for you when hiring health and safety environment people? Is it technical or non-technical competences? You can leave a comment if you like. I saw this recently, and I think it's very, very interesting. It's about a recent study made by ACRA Frameworks Advisory Panel with 96 senior health and safety professionals from over 20 different sectors. They found that 89% of panel members rated non-technical skills as the most important, and 100% reported that technical skills were the least important when recruiting and developing health and safety leaders. I would say it's about time. So my last question, a bonus question is for you. Next time you are uh, together with an employee, try to ask him, what can I do for you to improve your safety? I would guess you will find a lot of things that you didn't know beforehand. Thank you very much for listening to me. It's been a pleasure. And now for the questions, I would recommend these books. It's very, very nice books regarding human errors, how to promote safety culture, how to promote dialogue, how to learn from teams, how to actually go out and do something differently so we can also deal with the uh, human behavior. So thanks. Thank you so much, Søren. 
Um, it's really interesting what you just went through here. Actually, I have got a question, um, and it's a uh, about if you can put a comment on how you see a, a safety two uh, against safety one. Uh, do you have any opinions on, on on safety two? I think it's about time that we put down our fingers and pointing at people. Uh, safety two is about that we have to understand how people do their normal work in general, because it's very, very seldom that we have accidents. So there's a lot of things going very, very well. We have a lot of processes, a lot of flows. We have a lot of engaging, motivated workers, leaders doing their job. So in order to understand what works very, very good, to do more of that, we have to find out and go into some kind of a dialogue with them. Mm -hmm. The top comment that uh, safety is not a matter of the absence of accidents. He said it's the presence of capacity. So how do we build up this capacity? Again, remember the wall that I showed you, how do we build up this motor so the wall won't break down? So mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by safety too um, and it's, a, it's about time and I really really hope that our organizations and companies are trying to figure out uh, how to how, how to, 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 to to get all this practice you know, all this wisdom into practice and, and start doing it yeah I, I, I agree with you son because the problem is that if you don't have trust in each other and if you don't if you don't look after people, you won't feel safe. I mean, I, I wouldn't feel great on board a ship, for instance, if people they were not into safety and if they were not thinking on my behalf, because then it's this, the same as saying, I don't care about you, how you're doing, if you can just do your job. But when the shit hits the fan, it's a big problem. Yes. Also, because if people, they if they don't go into drills and if they see it as an annoying hour to spend one one time a month, mm. I mean, it's a, you will never get this teamwork um, to make a, a, a safe ship. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Uh, um, but, I, but I was wondering, because I know that you also, you are educated and navigator as well, and you've been sailing yourself, but how did you get so passionate about safety? Why did you take it into your career now uh, ashore? And um, what did you bring from sea uh, to the office now? Why, why are you continuing? Well, I, from, uh, I started my uh, maritime career in 83. I uh, went to seaman school and then afterwards I went to, to the training ship. And then I actually went to all the coasters because it was very, very hard to get into uh, uh, officer cadet. So I tasted how to how how normal job was done on uh, these coasters, and I must say um, there was no work environment at all. It was actually up to the master to decide if safety um, if it was unsafe or safe. So I learned it the hard way. Luckily enough, I never got injured, uh, but I took my chances. And was it because I was a fool, a dummy? No, there was no rules. Uh, it was only a show who had these uh, work environment uh, legislations. It came afterwards in the 90s. <clears throat> so, um, and I always wondered, how can it be that I have to do uh, so risky stuff every day uh, really mean it. it was very very risky um, and then i decided with myself something has to be done about this uh, because i saw a lot of uh, colleagues um, um, being very, very seriously injured uh, i start following the statistics and uh, fundamentally i just think that if you, uh, you you have to you have to make sure that if you hire people it has to be under these uh, 
safe and sound uh, conditions uh, if you if you have to if you have if you have to run a, a, a company. Uh, I must say we had a very big dialogue uh, in the 90s when I became an officer. It was also before the ISM code, and uh, I respect for the ISM code, and I, I think I, I totally understand the necessity due to the fact of hell of free enterprise and uh, and all the other. We have to have some kind of a system, but it's like the more system you get, the the, the less uh, dialogue you have among the crew. Yeah. We, we we go on maintaining these systems all the time, and we forget about. Uh, that we humans that we, we actually have to need to talk about uh, also the difficult stuff. Mm -hmm. so that is that my motivation is actually I'm very idealistic about uh, I, I cannot stand people getting hurt just because they're doing their job. No, nope, nope. That's also uh, <clears throat> why I I was <clears throat> I was I was a. Uh, totally upset the last week I, I saw three major accidents in one a paper a last week with the 42 people in um, seafarers going down on a vessel uh, close to japan um, amongst with the six thousand cows we don't know where they are there's a big oil slip uh, close to Mauritius and uh, a big ship on fire close to what it was it uh, Sri Lanka. It's uh, when when shit happens, it's it's really uh, dangerous. And um, I mean, I have the, the totally same opinion as you. And I can see Mass Miller. Uh, he just put a comment. He says, "We count what we can, what we can count, but we don't count what counts." Yeah, yeah. And I totally agree on that. Uh, but Sun, I would like to ask you, what what can the management team on board do to improve the the, the safety dialogue? I would say um, if they have to start tomorrow, uh, actually, I think it's a, it's a matter of also building trust. You, you cannot just start talking to people uh, in a different way from 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 one day mm -hmm. to another. You have to. Suddenly, build up trust that you actually that the people feel that you actually are concerned about them, that you actually care about them, that you like them. If you start doing that, uh, people will start open up for connection between you with the tools you have on board the vessel already. You have, you have the safety rounds, right? The safety uh, mm -hmm. action rounds. But try not try to not to. Just go around with your little piece of paper and your block and writing down. You have to go into some kind of a dialogue with the people doing the job. Mm -hmm. Curiously, when you do this, do you do you see any do you think see any things where you might get your fingers hurt? Or what do you feel about this? And how do we do that? Okay, you have to be curious about it. Mm -hmm. People don't like just to be observed. Uh, they, they they actually it's going to come in a freezing mode now. The chief officer, or the chief engineer, you know, the master, they, they 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 stand five meters away from me, just looking at me. Mm -hmm. That's not how it's going to work. Maybe later, but you have to build up the trust. Yeah. You also have this risk assessment processes, what we also call APVs, as you know. Try to go in some kind of a dialogue with the people instead of the chief engineer or the officer. He's sitting inside his office making a risk assessment. Mm -hmm. This is not how it's supposed to be done. People have to be involved in their own processes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the risk assessment is only going to be a piece of paper in a folder nobody uh, uses. So it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. You're doing a lot on the but people don't use it. Try to do something else. Also, the safety meeting. Try, try to 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 start something new. Atmosphere. How how, how we listen to it, one each other. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of methods that we always always are using about the vessels that actually you can, you can go in. But it, again, you have to step out of the comfort zone. I know that it's very very it's for hard, but you have to try. Because uh, there's a lot of hidden knowledge among the workers. Mm -hmm. I believe if all this knowledge 
is coming to the, to the leaders that can start doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So there's a gap. Build a bridge over uh, the gap. But actually, Sean, you are you are touching a lot of topics um, with what you're saying now because this is also about the culture misunderstandings and uh, getting to know each other. Because when you are at sea, you are you're also bringing your life with you for up to half a year, <clears throat> even longer for some people. Yeah. And um, so the the first important thing is that you you feel okay, that you feel fine where you are, and and. I mean, all of us, we human beings, we want to be in a dialogue. So we need to talk to each other to get to know each other. And by having a dialogue, you also show people that you care about them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, time is actually past now. Uh, we have we have been uh, on record for more than uh, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, let me just read the last comment from Mass again. I know he's also a pioneer and a, a front runner for safety on board the vessels. He he says that I believe that safety at work should not be about to prevent failures. It should be about how how we fail safely. Take a look at Volvo. They acknowledge that accidents will happen, but when they happen, they have designed their cars to don't kill people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I. I, oh. I yeah. Thanks. Um, thanks again. So now I would like to say thank you for listening along. And uh, this uh, tidbit will be saved in our library so you can uh, replay it or send it to your colleagues or whatever you like to do. Um, stay tuned for next week. We have three tidbits. And uh, Tuesday we will talk with Mark Holland from the British uh, Embassy. He will talk about how the, the status of the Brexit uh, and EU exit is going. Wednesday, it's all about wind logistics and wind turbines. And on Thursday, uh, we'll get to know why Trump he wants to buy Greenland in a maritime aspect. So as you can see, we, we, we cover a lot of different topics. Um, thank you so much, Sam for giving your presentation. It was a uh, heartfelt, um, thank you so much. And if you don't have any other comments, uh, please uh, end up, uh, tell us where we can buy this uh, nice Safe Talk game. You can go into our website, uh, safetalk.dk, and then you can read uh, much more about the safety game. And uh, if you'd like to, to buy it, uh, please leave a, a comment. We have a a standard uh, template, so you can use that one. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned, uh, stay safe. Stay safe. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.